Okay, so welcome back to another video with good audio quality. So as promised in the last video, we're gonna spend a little bit more time on this topic and read this through here before moving on. So this is an example and it's configuring an event policy to upload files. This example configures event policy actions that upload relevant files to a specified location for analysis. Before you begin, configure the destinations that you will reference in the event policy. See example defining destinations for file archiving by event policies. Configure the general event policy and triggering events. Overview, when an event policy action generates output files, you can archive the files for later analysis. Similarly, you might want to archive system files, including system log files, core files, and configuration files from the time an event occurs. You can configure an event policy to upload existing system files or to upload the output files generated from an invoked event script or command at the time an event occurs. Just wanna check my, this section outlines the configuration required for uploading each of these file types using an event policy. I just wanna check my audio settings here real quick. Okay, sweet, so the settings did persist. When you configure an event policy to upload files, the relevant files are uploaded to the location referenced in the destination statement configured for that pol event policy action. You must specify a destination name that is configured at the edit event options destinations hierarchy level to upload system files to a configured archive site. Configure the upload statement at the edit event options policy policy name then hierarchy level. If the configured events occur, the event D process executes the upload action. The upload file name committed destination destination name statement uploads the committed configuration file. If desired, you can include multiple upload statements, one for each type of file to be archived. In the file name statement, specify a file or multiple files to be uploaded. You can specify multiple files with one file name configuration statement, sometimes called file name globbing. For example, to upload all files that are located in the var log directory that start with the string messages, include the following statement. So you got this special star there. When configuring an event policy, when an event policy executes commands in response to an event, you can write the command output to a file. To configure an event policy to upload the generated output file to a configured archive site, include the following statements at the edit event options policy policy name then hierarchy level. When an event policy executes an event script in response to an event, you can write the script output to a file to configure an event policy to upload the generated output file to a configured archive site, include the following statements at the edit event options policy policy name then hierarchy level. The transfer delay statement listed in each hierarchy defines the time interval that the system waits before uploading the file specified by that event policy action. If you have also configured a transfer delay for the destination at the edit event options destinations destination time hierarchy level, the total transfer delay is the sum of the two delays. For more detailed information about transfer delays, see configuring the delay before files are uploaded by an event policy. Oh yeah, 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 I remember this. I guess um, I guess I am interested in some more information because I, I'm just not sure why you would want to delay. It's not telling you. Oh, here we go. So suppose you have multiple event policy actions that use the same destination. For some of these event policy actions, you want a transfer delay, and for other policy options, well, 
it still is not explaining why you would want a delay. I, I really don't understand what the um, purpose of a delay is. Um, Oh, here we go. The transfer delay helps ensure that a large file, such as a core file, is completely generated before the upload begins. So there we go, concepts not commands, number one key on this channel. Uh, that's how you can remember that transfer delay is a thing, and uh, it's because sometimes very large files need time to generate before they can be uploaded. So if you just do it, you won't get the whole file or the transfer will fail. So you can add a delay to big files and make sure that you won't have those failures. Perfect. So if the first upload attempt fails, retry account specifies the number of additional times the system attempts to upload the file. The retry interval specifies the time interval that the system waits between upload attempts. For more information, see configuring an event policy to retry the file upload action. The output file name statement listed in each hierarchy is a descriptive string that is included in the file name. When an event policy action uploads files, each uploaded file includes the host name and timestamps in the file name to ensure that each file name is unique. If a policy is triggered multiple times in a one second period, the index number is appended to the file name to ensure that the file names are still unique. The index number range is 001 through 999. The name of the file depends on the version of OS running on the device prior to the um, Junos OS release 14. The file name has the following naming convention. <clears throat> Starting there, it has this one. Yep, and this is the one we saw on the one we did. We've got version 17. The output file name string is either the name of, of an existing file or the value configured for the output file name statement within the event policy then clause under the hierarchy for the appropriate event policy action. For example, if you have an event policy action with output file name rpd-messages on device R1 running Junos release 14 or a later release. And this policy, event policy is executed three times in one second. The files are named as follows. So you're gonna, yep, and, and you can have up to 99, or sorry, 999. In this example, policy one consists of the following statements where E1 is a triggering event. The example then configures the event policy to upload a log file and the committed configuration file as well as output files generated from the execute commands and event script actions. All right, so here's the quick configuration to quickly do this. Um, so yeah, 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 let's, let's do this here. So let's just do this one by the step by step because I wanna, we're gonna have to modify the commands anyway. So we might as well just do that in the step by step. So let's do that with, uh, so, so we got router three. Let's do that all the way on router five just so it kinda, I think it's a little bit more fun to send it all the way through the network. A little bit of a psychological trick to keep things more interesting. All right, so R5, so I'm gonna do configure private, edit event options, policy, policy one then, set upload file name, bar log messages, destination. Oh, and remember, uh, what it said at the beginning that it's not gonna give us directions for how to set up the destination. It's assuming that it's already been set up. So we're gonna have to go and do that extra. Oop, and it looks like I forgot the S. And let's just do one uh, destination. Um, it looks like it's got two. 
Um, so, well, let's just follow the example as is actually. And then if it doesn't work, um, that'll be a good troubleshooting exercise. And um, okay, so now we're gonna need to delete this one. Perfect. And uh, set it again so that we're using the right file name. All right, so everything looks good. Management-server, management-archives. File path looks good. So, Perfect. So now we've got an optional. This is the transfer delay that we would do in case a file needs time to generate. Otherwise, we have a problem where we're only sending a portion of the file, but not the whole thing because it hasn't generated yet. Or that since that file hasn't completely generated, it's not even sendable. So our whole thing fails. One of those two scenarios could happen if we don't add in a delay so that we're sure that the file is ready to be sent before we send it. So let's do that, even though it's optional. We're gonna give it four seconds, I believe. Delay, yep, four seconds. So, oh, and another thing you can do is, so if it were to just fail, you know, you're in luck then because you've got the ability to try again. So where that delay is really useful is if it hasn't generated all the way, it's uh, generating, 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 Oh, you said to send it, here you go. But uh, after you send it, generating, so the file actually looks like this, but you only sent that because you didn't wait for the rest of the file to be sent. So that's where that command's really useful. But if it comes to a thing where it's generating, 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 okay, now send. Oh, but this part wasn't done generating yet. I can't send it then you can just use the resend and you can say generating, generating, generating. Okay, ready to send. Oh, but I wasn't done send. Oh, it's failed because, because it didn't have everything. Send it again, now it works. So, so you've got multiple ways you can handle the issue of a file not being ready to be sent. You can either give it more time, or you can just retry. All right, and I, I think our username isn't gonna be um, admin, our, our username is going to be uh, root. So this is kind of the problem we've had that we had to uh, we had to overcome is we weren't having the appropriate privileges. So you can see clearly we're going to need to be concerned about that because that can be a big issue. Okay, but I think this is going to be a good start. Um, before we commit, um, let's, so what is this? Um, all right, I'm not sure what that is, but let's set up the destination. So they give us the link to yeah, to how to do that here. So let's go through that quick. 
So it's going to be, aha, and I remember doing this before, so it's going to be edit event options, destinations, boon to server, edit archive sites, set. So now it's going to be FTP, GNS3, at 10.0.0.2, password GNS3. Um, and we can do a transfer delay, set transfer delay. Oh, but it's, it's, set. it's not there. And let's just delay for uh, one second. Okay, so now everything is, oops, uh, we're missing mandatory statements events. Aha, so that makes sense because this is an event option. So it's got to be triggered by something in order for it to be valid. It has to be triggered by an event. So let's set up the event. So we've finished this part. So when the event policy invokes the execute commands action. So So uploading system files. Okay, so we got more stuff to go. It looks like that's gonna be the final thing we do down here, I think. Um, uh, I'm not sure. Oh, here we go, yeah. So this uh, execute commands, yeah, I think we'll, we'll be uh, a part of this configuration here. Let's just keep on moving. So we'll do edit event options, policy, policy one, then set, ah, here we go. Execute commands. Uh, and then it's gonna be output file name, GE interfaces, execute, Commands, destination, MGMT archives. So, oh, and here's an optional transfer delay. Let's add it in case the files are really big and require time to, um, to load before we send them or to be generated before we send them. All right. Oh, okay, so it did say in the last one that we should be able to commit, so, um, yeah, we're missing um, events and we're missing commands. Let's, let's do a show event options, pipe display set. Um, and let's, let's do a show event options policy, policy one, uh, pipe display set relative. So we've got We've got a then, but we don't have a um, a match. So we've got a bunch of then statements, but we're missing statements before the then statements. Yeah, we're missing a bunch of statements here because it does say along each step that we should be able to commit. Um, but if we commit, you can see very clearly, executes commands, missing mandatory, mandatory statement commands. So let's do edit event options, policy, policy one, then execute commands, 
show pipe display set relative. So it's missing a mandatory statement commands. So let's just follow what the CLI says to do. So we'll set the command. And uh, it looks like the output file is going to be G and E interfaces. So let's have the command be show configuration interfaces um, pipe display set. Um, okay. So let's see if that error message goes away. It does. So now we're going to need uh, events under here. So let's do edit event options, policy, policy one, show pipe display set relative. And let's do set events. Oops. Oh, here we go. Here's a bunch of events. So let's have the event for this be uh, whenever we commit. Um, yeah, I actually tried making an event script for GNS3 where it would every uh, three hours, if you didn't type anything into the CLI, it would reboot. So I made sure I never had that um, problem where the CLI would time out because it would always be a fresh reboot every three hours um, if I didn't do anything. But it, it just failed spectacularly. Like I did the, um, I did it absolutely perfect. There was nothing wrong with it. Like, but it just kept rebooting instantly, even though I, I, pretty sure I had it right. Like you don't have a statement in there that says after 30 and then the reboot under there and not have it wait after. So I don't know what went wrong, but um, you know, as I've said multiple times, sometimes when you're using virtualization, uh, unfortunately things don't happen the way you would expect them to happen and the way they would happen otherwise. Okay, so let's have the event be every time there's a commit. Okay, so now it's going to commit. Oops. Uh, oh, okay, so now we got even more issues. So destination management server, that's not defined. So what, what is our, our upload? Did we name? Oh, uh, okay, yeah. We named the Ubuntu server instead of management server. So... Let's do edit, event options, destinations, Ubuntu server, show pipe display set relative. And now we'll go up, delete, Ubuntu server, edit, and now we'll see what it needs to be named. It needs to be named MGMT server. Okay, so now it can have all of this. Perfect. Um, if we do a commit now, we're still gonna have problems because management archives is not defined. So let's um, delete that. Show pipe display set, pipe match management archives. So We'll delete this. Um, well, let's see what we've got for management server beforehand because if there's, yeah, if there's more um, stuff for management archives than there is for management server, like let's just use uh, management server instead. So yeah, for management server, um, we're going to get rid of all the configuration. Yeah, and then since there's more configuration for management archives, we're going to change that to, uh, we're just going to use that instead. So, um, yep, and then we need the configuration we added 
uh, here when we did, uh, yep, yep, so this stuff, uh, oh, where was it? It was, it was right here, but it was, I remember it was somewhere. Um, hmm. Oh, here we go. So edits, yeah, here we go. So I did an edit here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's this configuration here, but it's going to be edit event options, destinations, management archive. Perfect, so hopefully that commits. Nope, there's still, still some issues. Um, destination management archives is not defined, so let's do edit event options. Policy, policy one, then upload, uh, oops, then, uh, then show pipe show pipe display set relative and yeah let's do edit upload um let's see here management archives uh yeah that looks good i don't see what the problem is So, oh, I'm missing an S. All right, finally, this problem config is good to go. So our list of errors, yep, it's just one final error. So we don't have uh, this user root. It, it won't, we do have the user root, but it won't let us use the default one. Uh, we can always set up a, a new user. Um, it's good to have practice with that. So edit system login, set user, um, and then I'll, I'll say, um, uh, 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 Python networking and then I'll say oh wait oh this is the JNC IE so, so I'll say JNC IE SP is the user JNC IE SP and then the password oh and then uh, uh, oh yeah 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 authentication will have plain text and it'll be uh, P-A-S-S-I-T pass it uh, oh, but that doesn't meet the complexity. So capital P A S S I T P A S S I T. And then we're going to have a class assigned to it as well. So we'll give it a super user. So now we can redefine that statement so that it's the uh, JNCIE SP user instead of the root user that it doesn't let us use. So, yep, right here we can delete this. And set it to JNCIE SP. And hopefully the commit goes through nice and clean. Yep, takes a while. So now I've got it set up to trigger on an event. I think we do have one last Thing to do and it's the uploading command output files so when the event policy invokes the execute commands action the command output can be written to a file configure the event policy policy one to write command output to a file and upload the generated file to the destination management archives which is already configured at the event options destinations hierarchy level so, oh, I think we actually did that already. So 
Yeah, let's take a look at some of the configuration in that. So, yep, the GE-archives, sure enough, yeah, we did that. Or GE-interfaces, yep, we did that. So, yeah, all of this is done. Let's move on to the final one, and it's uploading event script output files. So let's see if we did this one yet. Policy one, script output, nope. So when an event policy invokes an event script, the script output can be written to a file. Configure the event policy policy one to write event, event script output to a file and upload the generated file to the destination management archives, which is already configured at the edit event options destinations hierarchy level. In this example, the event policy invokes an event script named event script one. All right, so let's do it. And remember that this is, these are event options, so they're going to be triggered by an event. And there's lots of things that are events. You just go to, um, let's see here, so uh, top, or sorry, run, show, configuration, pipe, display set, pipe, match, event. So you're going to configure the events. The one we chose was this UI commit. Under, it's still going to be under your event options, um, the name of your, your policy, but you're going to have to include the events you want to trigger the then statements in, in those policy. That's something that this uh, d actually does not say. It might be worth a downvote just because it's annoying that they don't talk more about that and kind of leave you to figure it out on your own. But I kind of think it, it's valid to figure it out on your own if you're gonna learn everything just by having it uh, read to you and not explore around and figure out what it means. It's kind of, I, I don't think it's, it's necessarily their job to, um, to make sure that you know every little aspect in detail. It's kind of up to you to, uh, to learn some of it on your own. And the, uh, the CLI, when you do a commit, makes it very clear if you are missing a required piece of configuration. Okay, so here's the optional delay for bigger files. Transfer delay, let's see what they give it. Five, five seconds. So now we're going to have a retry interval every four seconds. And we're going to retry five times uh, every four seconds. Perfect. And commit, which will trigger archives for our other commands. So let's go and look at those archives now that that event has been triggered. And you'll notice I didn't do anything on router three, only on router five. So we're not gonna have any for router three if I go back to here. Um, but yep, you can see I've got um, the, the files that I wanted. Uh, I'm kind of surprised they're not zipped. I'm gonna see if I can actually print them out. Yeah, so, so they're, just, they're not zipped at all. They're just the whole thing. No zombies were killed during the creation of this user interface. <laughs> It's kind of funny, I'm not sure where that comes from. Uh, oh, it looks like it comes from uh, netconf. So these are all, these, these are XML, or sorry, not netconf, it, com it comes from the XML. So if you use XML, you're gonna get this kind of funny uh, banner associated with it, but you can see very clearly, um, oh, it's like JunoScript. But yeah, it says, um, it should tell you that it, yeah, schema location, uh, XML.juniper.net. So very clearly it is XML. 
the yeah, it says here XML version is version 1.0. It shows you the encoding, and it's a uh, Juno script. So that's, I think, kind of neat. And I think that's a much more useful format than the uh, zip format we got before. Yeah, and here we go. Here's all the um, it's kind of system information. So you can see just how, how essential this, this would be, how useful, how much uh, better this would make your network having this, this information. Of course, you need to worry about link saturation. You can't just be spamming you know, thousands of files down, down your links. You gotta save some for, for traffic. Um, one thing you can do, which we'll learn about in the next chapter, is set up a QoS policy on your management VLAN and you only allow a certain amount of traffic over. So you, you set a hard set, you say, you know, the, this, these, these here are for customers. Management only gets that. If it can't do it in that, then it's gotta try to resend it. It's gotta, um, it's gotta it, it can't bleed over to these. This is reserved aside. Um, you can certainly do that. That's not hard to do at all. And we'll learn about that, I'm sure, in the next section, uh, which I think uh, we're about ready to move on to. Yeah, so let's uh, do the verification. Issue the show configuration event options. Operational mode command to review the resulting configuration. So they're using SCP. We're going to use FTP. Finally got that to work, a huge pain in the A. I never did figure out how to get it into a, a better file. Now that I have um, backups created, maybe I can do that. Maybe that was the issue is that I never had, um, I never had a file actually ready to go. I tried to use the FTP upload to make a new directory, but that might not be something that you can do. So let's see here. Everything looks good here, but we're going to need to We're going to need to, uh, this, so this is the, what we're going to need to change. So we'll delete this. Uh, oops. Okay, so I'll do a top and then a delete. So I forgot to do the display set relative. And now I'll put this, I'll see if I can put this in the backups folder. Okay, and now I'll make a superfluous commit or just, just any commit. I, I don't even think I need to actually commit something. Oh, and yeah, we can see they're unfortunately not going into the backups folder. Oh, they are. Okay, perfect. So yeah, that one was just probably the commit where you change the folder you want the commit to still goes to the old folder. That would make a lot of sense. So let's uh, do edits. Insg009 set description test test one two three top commit we'll roll back one and we'll do another commit um, and uh, yeah you can see I see we've got more um, looks like we still didn't get one for oh we did get one for the rollback commit this time too so. Yeah, this is, I, this is really cool stuff. I'm really glad the, the test goes over this. So let's read the meaning in the sample output. The management archives destination has two archive sites and a transfer delay of five seconds. You can now reference this destination in event policies. When you reference the management archives destination in an event policy, specified files are uploaded to the first archive site, site after a five second delay. If the e-transfer to the first archive fails, the device attempts to upload the files to the var log archive site 
For more information about referencing destinations and event policies, see example configuring an event policy to upload files. Note that although the plain text password is visible when you configure it, the configuration displays the encrypted password and it uses really solid encryption to another big benefit Junipers have over Cisco's. Cisco just uses Cisco 7 encryption. It's their own proprietary version of encryption and it's, it's I think it's a Caesar cipher. I'm not even sure what it is, but I do know that you can just use any free Cisco 7 decrypting tool you find online and you'll get accurate results from that. You can also, as a way to learn Python, build your own tool. There's tutorials for that too. All right, but that was pretty easy. We made it all the way through. So let's cross that off, mark this done, and then I will see you in the next video. So this was for archival scripts. So I'll rename that to done. So I'll see you in the next video where we learn more about OP event and commit scripts. Um, we obviously did an event script here, but we'll dive into more details. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.